Good morning, friends, wherever you are, and welcome to today's Cichlids and Coffee live stream. And wherever you are, I hope you're having a, uh, a good, strong cup of joe. We sometimes call it joe here in the United States. And um, funny how things that we love have uh, usually a lot of nicknames. <laughs> so um, let's see here. Welcome, everybody. And... Cat Sailor, welcome to you, Cat Sailor. Carrie Pitt is here, Adams Aquatics. And uh, somebody mentioned that the uh, that there was still the nitrate factory photo up, and that is not the case. It was changed. We have a new uh, thumbnail that was been up since uh, yesterday, so I'm not sure what the... Uh, try and uh, refresh, maybe um, refresh your screen or something. I don't know. Maybe YouTube is just lagging. Sometimes YouTube will lag incredibly like I'll check I'll check what's called YouTube analytics and they'll tell me that a video that's been out for a day has had 50 views and then I'll check back five minutes later and it'll say 1300 views and so it, it just it lags back and forth all the time so maybe it just lagged on switching out that thumbnail which is unusual but I'm not going to be talking about nitrate factories and canisters Maybe if you ask a question, you know, I always keep it kind of, uh, I always keep it kind of uh, open ended here on the live stream. I am going to talk about what's been going on here in the fish room with regards to um, fish losing their minds and fish going absolutely uh, crazy colorful. And uh, I'm also going to talk a little bit about food today, fish food. And, uh, Things of that nature. These fish are probably very hungry. I'm going to go ahead and feed them on camera. So you can see just how crazy they get. But as you can see, they're all doing very, very well. So um, good morning to all of you. And a special welcome to my um, moderators who help keep the stream moving along and family friendly. <laughs> Yes, there are some trolls out there, and uh, we have to be on the lookout for them. And uh, they don't get too far on my channel. The um, <clears throat> zero tolerance policy. <laughs> so let's see here. Adam's Aquatic Addiction. Hey, uh, how's the uh, audio video? How's the audio and video? Things sound good? Look good? Let me know. Uh, comment. And... Um, Hey, Jerry, I'm going to be seeing you in a week, Jerry. It's getting close. Aquashella is next week. There will be no live stream uh, next week, except for the one that I'll be doing from Aquashella on the Aquashella channel. And uh, I don't know what they call it, fish tubers, creators. I don't know what they call it, but I will be broadcasting from there. Uh, they've asked me to do a talk on 10 tips for a successful cichlid tank. And that will be the topic. And uh, you know me, I love 10 tips. And uh, <clears throat> I think that's my most uh, popular video on YouTube, 10 tips. First video that ever went viral anyway. Sound is good. And uh, thank you, Dan. And let's see here. GP. <clears throat> hey, GP. Carrie, everything uh, looks and sounds great. Thank you very much for that. You don't know from your end, unless you have a monitor, and I tried running a second PC for a monitor, and but sometimes if you're not, uh, if you don't have the volume set just right, you can get an echo, and it can be very annoying. So um, hey, Leo is here, Leo two hundred nine, and uh, Tank Boss five point nine has nineteen juveniles waiting for them to color up. Wow! And I heard disc discussing has free swimming. Baby discus, that is exciting. Hey, Frank. And uh, Frank, are you going to make it to uh, Aquashella? Frank Vera? Craw Daddy is here. Cuando, cuando, cuando. And uh, Mike Honorado is here. Hey, I'm Mark. Mark Honorado. Sorry about that, Mark. Craw Daddy, Slim Tim. <laughs> love these. Love these. In the jeans. Love these uh, YouTube names. Marcin Sursa, if I miss you, I'm sorry. Hey, Fingy, uh, Fre 
Frankie Fingers is here. Hey, Frankie. Peas and Haps forever. Amber Key, my good friend, Z Zip and Amber Key. Carrie Pitt. Good to see you, Carrie Pitt. Hey, John. Glad you're here, John. And I did get your email, John. Let me see here. All right. So a big welcome to all of you. And while I was doing that, of course, we're getting more people on the stream. And uh, let's see if we can fill fill the house up. Hey, A. Aaron, good morning to you. And Davis567 and Brandon. And Javier is here. Cheers to you, Javier. Greetings from Massachusetts, from Johnny Boy. I've been to Massachusetts quite a few times. I used to have a job where I traveled around the country, usually two to three cities a week, three weeks at a time, and then I'd go home for a week. And so I've seen most of this beautiful country. And uh, we've got some wonderful places. So let's, uh, let's do this. Let's go ahead and uh, officially start this live stream. If you're new to the channel and you like the content of this channel, please be sure to hit the sub button, the bell, and uh, all that good stuff. Tells YouTube something good is going on and encourages YouTube to show the channel to other fish keepers. And let's see if we can get this channel up over 50,000. How exciting would that be? 50,000 subscribers. Who knew? Who could have predicted that? And um, big shout out, of course, to my moderators and... Uh, a big shout out to the Cichlid Shack. Every fish you see here behind me is from the stock of the Cichlid Shack. They're doing a big build out there, and uh, it doesn't look like James Largo is going to make it to Aquashella, unfortunately. He's still catching up after the uh, couple weeks he was out with COVID, and so uh, he's got a lot of back orders. Don't forget to use um, Shack Attack. 15 for 15% 15 off on fish orders that are over a hundred dollars before shipping and you can get 10% on food and products Everything else he sells with shack attack 10 doesn't matter how much uh, You buy with food and products so um, Brandon shout out to you Ben I used the shack attack 15 at the shack and got some beautiful haps delivered all the way to Toronto Wow didn't know he delivered uh, to Canada. That's awesome. That's really good to hear. And I'm glad they got there. I know we have a lot of interesting stuff going up in Canada right now, <laughs> going on up in Canada. So um, <clears throat> if you'd like to support the channel, uh, consider becoming a Patreon. It's as little as $3 a month. And um, on up from there, the higher levels do give you some swag. But uh, you do get previews and videos that are only for Patreon members, behind-the-scene looks, things like that, and it helps a lot. It's actually paying for my trip to Orlando. The, um, so it helps finance things. And uh, use the Amazon link to get to Amazon. Whether you buy something from the store, from my recommended fish keeping items, or from anywhere on Amazon, if you use that link, it gives a credit to the channel for anything you buy. How cool is that? And uh, if you'd like some swag, some T-shirts, and... Uh, and coffee mugs and all kinds of good stuff like this. I've got coffee mugs with all kinds of fish on them and stuff. Go to the Teespring store and use live stream for a 10% discount. Okay, so that pays the bills. <laughs> Someone's got to pay for all this. <laughs> you know, I'm retired, so I've got... <laughs> I rely on the, uh, on the kindness of strangers... <laughs> So um, let's go ahead and get back here to the main scene. And uh, I've got a, a special video for you that I, uh, instead of getting up and, and moving the camera around, which I, I might end up doing anyway. And by the way, in the future, I want to set up eventually two or maybe three cameras, but I don't want them to be uh, cheap little cameras. I want to get some good cameras and uh, they now sell a very small switcher. And you can just switch from camera to camera. And I think I can also do that with, uh, 
with the OBS platform. But I would, I, I, I'd love to just have cameras on the different tanks and be able just to switch to them and talk to you instead of getting up and having to turn the tripod and all that sort of stuff. But um, at any rate, future plans. Those are some future plans. And um, I, I, I've had a lot of wild stuff going on here in, in the fish room. If you saw my last uh, video, you know some of it was bad. And some of it, if you, uh, some of it was really good. And uh, let me just go ahead and play this special video for you. And uh, you tell me what you think in the chat. And uh, we'll go from there. Here you go. So let's start off with some good news. And that is that I think I have finally dialed in this Horizon tank. You see I swapped out that big heater for that flat heater, which actually seems to be doing the job now that I've got a cover on the tank. And um, the fish that are in here now uh, seem to be thriving and not getting scooped up and caught between the back wall and the suction grills of the filter since I wrapped the filter in that uh, pinky floss. You can see that in the last video about this tank. And I think the uh, thumbnail is uh, fail, it says fail or failure on it. <laughs> and, uh, but I think I've got it. So that, that's good news. And uh, this 55 is continuing to be one of my um, favorite tanks. It was designed initially as a grow out tank and uh, for South and Central American cichlids and the fish that are in it are just blossoming beautifully. That red spotted severum, those uh, chocolate cichlids from Mexico and uh, are just looking really, really pretty. And I'm really happy with what I'm seeing in this 55 gallon. The redhead top hose are starting to show some, some of the stripes on the, um, on the tail and some color around the face. It's just absolutely beautiful. See in the peck fins too, just gorgeous. There's some uh, dwarf rainbows in there as well that are all doing well, all 10 of them that I bought from a local breeder. The two um, electric blue acaras are looking great. They're getting nice and fat. You can see the trailer on the, uh, on the back of the dorsal. Just a, just a very, very pretty fish. Very happy with both of them. And uh, there's also a, a green tear in there, a couple of them. And, and this is the dominant green tear. This is the one that gets in there with the other fish and eats and uh, holds his own. The other one just kind of pecks around. And there was a third one, but unfortunately I lost him. He um, never really quite got as strong and certainly not as big as this one. It was definitely a sort of a subdominant fish. The 210 is doing spectacular, just an explosion of color. It looks like the um, wave maker just kicked on, so you get to see a lot of the detritus that that wave maker is designed to kick up off the off of the aquarium floor and send over to the intakes. This is why I don't have to vacuum this tank that often, if ever. But the colors in this tank are just uh, they're just spectacular. I'm just loving it, and. Uh, just every single one of them. And there are no females in here. It's not like these are male fish that are going into breeding, uh, you know, like breeding colors or what they call breeding dress. These are just male fish with beautiful coloration. And, uh, you know, my, my hat's off to uh, James over at the Cichlid Shack, wherever he's getting these fish. He's got some uh, great providers. There's that uh, Lethronops oculatus beautiful fish. There's Skittles, the OB, a bit of a pygmy compared to the other fish. There goes the Fusco, the Venusis, beautiful trout. That trout is just becoming more and more spectacular. The colors on the Insignis are looking great. Johnson Eye with those beautiful um, vertical bars. There's Skittles, probably one of the smaller fish in the tank, like the Bicolor 500. That's the Placodon. Placodon is a very rare fish there in the bottom left with those black blotches. Just kind of keeps to himself, but just a very beautiful fish if you look at him real close. He's got some very nice markings. This hawk all of a sudden, and he's on the uh, thumbnail of this, of this live stream, all of a sudden his, uh, his face just exploded with color. Black markings and, 
and just a beautiful luminescent blue. I think he's on his way to becoming a spectacular, spectacular hawk. Just very pretty. Love the way they tilt on their side to look down on fish. They are aristocratic, right? Aristochromis. And they look down on other fish sideways. It's part of their ambush behavior. Here's a tangerine tiger, perhaps one of the most spectacular tangerine tigers I've ever seen. And this, uh, this Buchachromis spectabilis, I've owned them before, and they've been sort of a pale, a pale blue throughout the body. This one is just spectacular in his colors. The yellow that he has in that anal fin and the beautiful face spots at the end of the dorsal. Just a, trem just a tremendous example of a Buchachroma spectabilis. Is that Johnson eye? One of the prettiest fish in Lake Malawi, I think. So this tank is doing great. Look at that face on that gar. Look at those lips. Pretty amazing. And of course, you know this is one of my favorites, the Auto Pharynx Tetrastigma. If you have an African cichlid tank, you have to have an Auto Pharynx Tetrastigma. They're like an electric uh, light show. The fish are all behaving, including the Nimbochromis. The Fusco is sort of keeping to his own. The Venusus doesn't get in any trouble. The um, Living Stone, I will get a little fired up after a water change. But after an hour or two, he'll calm down and he'll get his blotches back. After a water change, he'll go all blue and then slowly start to get those blotches back as he calms down. I'm thinking that this tank with these uh, Serpe and Lemon Tetras and a few other varieties in there, including a Rummy Nose and uh, there's a Celestial Danio in there and a couple Cory Cats. I'm thinking I might just turn this into a planted community tank. It was supposed to be just a holding tank and a hospital tank, and but I'm actually having a lot of fun just messing around with this tank. I put some rocks in there. I put some scraps of Anubias on some real wood that I had. There's some Amazon swords in there, and, um, and I just I just like what I'm seeing with this tank. The fish are all thriving and doing well. Here's uh, Mr. Mustard. This is called a Mustard Gas Blue Betta. And the lighting doesn't really do him justice here. His body is just the most beautiful shade of blue. But he's uh, he's doing well. And, I, and when I was having trouble with that Horizon tank, I was almost tempted just to decorate up this little top fin five gallon and just make this his home. He's been very comfortable in there. And after I put the cave in and the almond leaves, and he, he's just doing great. He's active, he's eating, he interacts with me constantly. Where the trouble is, and here's the bad news, you see these pits? I even the sand out about an hour ago. And you can see what's going on there. There's some massive pits being... Uh, constructed here. One in the back right corner, I could see the bottom of the tank. I had to fill that one in. And what has happened is one of the Nicaragua cichlids have, has all of a sudden uh, hit puberty. He's got a little nuchal hump that showed up. And um, I believe it's a male. It must be a male with that hump. And the other one, the smaller Nicaragua, who was also helping to build these pits, I believe is a female is smaller and has brighter colors and those are the signs of a female Nicaragua. These Nicaraguas can get up around 10 inches and during breeding they can be very aggressive and so they started claiming parts of the tank as their own and trying to scare off and chase off other fish. And this started some battles in this tank. You can see him there. They would even double team on some of the bigger fish. But it wouldn't work on the vieja zonatus. I have a very big blue vieja in here called a zonatus. You can see him right there. And he's just a big, heavy fish. 
judging by his temperament, even though I don't see the nuchal, the head bump, that is going to be showing up if it is a male. I don't see one of those yet, but these fish can get up to 12 inches if it's a male, and they have a reputation of being very aggressive, especially the males. And he was having none of it. He was not letting those fish claim any area of the tank. And this was creating chaos. He'd go after the Nicaraguas. The Nicaraguas would go after one of the geos. Um, the, uh, the, the Zanatas would go after one of the other viejas. And it was just a free-for-all. Somehow the AC Hecali and uh, the Jack Dempsey managed to stay off the radar. Their fins look great. They don't look like they've been beaten up at all. The Geo Surimanensis have the same sort of fin damage they normally have just from going after each other. But you can see that Jack Dempsey here looks great. So they don't, they, they don't seem to want to mess with him, even though he's not necessarily larger, or but they just sort of keep their distance. And he holds his ground. I should say she. Someone pointed out it's a female. I'm tempted to take these geos and put them in the 55 along with a couple of other fish in here like the AC Hecali and the Sebrum. I talk about this uh, in detail in a, um, you see that dive bombing right there by the Zonatus. That's a lot of fish to come crashing down on you. I talk about this in more detail in an upcoming video called uh, Chaos in the 90 Gallon. So watch for that video. I think it's going to drop on Tuesday. So watch for that. It's a big, beautiful fish. Not sure what I'm going to end up doing with him, possibly putting him in the 55. We'll see. We'll see what I'm going to do with that fish. I am going to probably have to take out the red shoulder Severum. You can see him back there hiding and trying to be invisible. Unfortunately, he's taken a few shots, and his tail is a little bit shredded right now. Not like down to the meat or anything like that but he's definitely under stress. He's much bigger than the um, red spotted gold Severums, but you can see his tail there. He's and he's got a few shots on the side too. So I think he's gonna have to come out because he's just getting caught too much in the crossfire. He's just too big of a target. So I'll probably have to pull him out. I might give away that male Nicaragua. The females are supposed to be more uh, more colorful even though they don't get as large but um, it really has created just too much chaos and the truth is they all need to be in that 300 gallon that I have coming I had to pull out two of the uh, viejas that were in there originally because they were they were just getting caught up in all of it and um, their sides were damaged their tails were damaged and I just said, okay, you two need a break. And I pulled them out and I put them into this 55 gallon, which was designed and set up originally for African cichlids. It has a aragonite and crushed coral substrate. So it's not really designed for South American cichlids. I put the divider in just so they could not start picking on each other. Just give them their space. But I put some almond leaves in there. I put a, a big chunk of that Zoomed Mopani wood. And, and hopefully that's, that's changing the water a little bit. I know it's not going to change it a tremendous amount, but it's changing the water a little bit to make them both more comfortable. They're both swimming around a lot more than they were a few days ago. This one's built a pit under the filter that he's claimed as home. And they're both eating very, very well. So I'm not worried about them, but um, I think I'm not going to put them back in that 90 until things calm down. And then ultimately, they all need to go into the 300. And I think in the 300, things will be okay. You can see the almond leaves there behind that cave. Put an almond leaf in the betta betta tank as well and of course my companion here in the fish room say hi Jackson this is Jackson 
and Lucy just stays at the top of the stairs, but Jackson likes to come down and hang with me. Well, there it is. That's the update. And as you can see, never a dull moment for us cichlid keepers. And uh, I'm thinking I may have to pull out that male uh, Nicaragua, maybe take him over to the local fish store. And um, unless I want to have, unless I want to breed Nicaraguans, I mean, they paired up and I guess I could have a, uh, some offspring, some fry, but um, they really change when they pair up. They get extremely, I mean, you see that with any kind of fish, really, when they're breeding, they get very, very antagonistic. And uh, so um, I think what I'm going to do is is go ahead and uh, and pull out that severum and make a few other changes. I talk about it in the upcoming video. And let's see here. Someone mentioned we might be having some. Uh, here we go. Let me check on the chat here. Let me go ahead and check a few things on the focus. Find out what's going on with that focus, but let's see. I'm looking at your uh, I'm looking at your chats here. Let me see if you have any questions. The 300 gallon, by the way, I'm having the I'm having the stand for the 300 gallon delivered in the first sec or second week of March. I'm going to do all the electrical work. I'm going to cut out some holes in the stand, and uh, that's going to go ahead and and uh, prepare the stand and, and for the tank. And then the tank will be delivered like a week later. And uh, and then we'll go from there. Let me see if I can figure out what's going on with the uh, with the focus. And yeah, I think uh, someone mentioned a Joey size tank. Yeah, I think in a three hundred gallon things will calm down a lot more. Uh, but even then, I mean, you still have to keep keep an eye on them. And some fish might still be uh, kind of crazy. I mean, I watch. Uh, a YouTuber named Darius, I think it's D Darius, on YouTube. He's got a great channel. He's got a massive tank. I think it's over 300, maybe even 500, and he'll still have uh, outbursts of uh, just outbursts of violence. So I'm not really sure what's going on there. So um, let me take a look here at your comments and. Looks like, uh, how do you set up your beautiful backgrounds? Uh, Jeff, the backgrounds that I use, uh, Jeff Hester, how do you set up your beautiful dark backgrounds? The backgrounds I use are uh, are a, a sort of a plastic sort of wrap, a vinyl wrap type of background. They're made by a company called Velamax. And if one of the moderators can, um, can locate that video, I think it's called Perfect Background very easy you just really clean the heck out of the glass right using a razor blade if you need to to scrape off anything that might be on there get it get it impeccable and um, and then you you know very carefully remove the uh, the clear plastic from this material and uh, and you know make sure you don't get any lint on it or anything you spray the material you spray the back of your tank and then you just attach it and then you use a credit card or a squeegee, you get all the water out of it, and it just attaches on there with water. And uh, you then use a razor blade just to kind of cut any areas that need to be, uh, you know, touched up so that it's right. And if you ever get sick of it, it just peels right off. Peels off cleanly, you just spray clean it and attach a different color, you know? And so it's, uh, it's made by a company called Velamax. It's not uh, super cheap. I think I might have it at my Amazon store. Now, one of you mentioned that you couldn't find the coffee mugs at my Amazon store. They're not at the Amazon store. The coffee mugs are at Teespring, at Teespring. And again, if one of my wonderful moderators can share that Teespring link, that would be great. And... Um, any questions, go ahead and ask them. 
Peas and Haps Forever Velomax is a great product. I have it on all my tanks. Yeah, it's it's real easy to use. And I actually used the white Velomax on a bathroom window. We have a very large, I don't know why you'd put a large pitcher window in a bathroom, but our bathroom has a large pitcher window facing out to the street. <laughs> and we didn't want anybody to see what was going on. <laughs> so we put this frosted Velomax and it was very easy to apply. Don't, I don't recommend you buy the vinyl uh, or plastic material, uh, tinting material that has any kind of adhesive on it because it is just a nightmare to work with. And inevitably, unless you have like four people doing the job, inevitably two pieces will get stuck together and then they'll, they'll look all wrinkled when you pull them apart. It's just horrible. It's a nightmare. Just use the water application Velomax. That's the best. It, in my opinion. And uh, let's see here. I'm going back back in time through the uh, through the chat here. Thanks, Jerry. I appreciate that on the video and voiceover. Uh, George uh, Fernandez, yes, I have kept Frontosa. You can see him, and uh, you can see uh, him. It was his name was Eeyore, and uh, <laughs> I finally gave him to somebody who had a Frontosa only tank, uh, someone named Kevin Green that you'll run across here on video on uh, YouTube. Real nice guy, and he had a Frontosa only tank at the time, and so he took, he went ahead and took that fish, and uh, he was much happier in a Frontosa only tank. You keep him a little bit dimly lit has to be pretty big, uh, six or more frontosa. I mean, that's when they're happiest. And uh, they're very low-key fish. So uh, let's see if there's any other questions here I want to answer. And did I miss any super chats? No super chats. Okay, good. So um, any questions, go ahead and ask them now. And I want to talk to you a little bit about food, about feeding and food. Jonathan, sorry to hear that. Found my trout dead. No signs of anything. Uh, Connie or Corey Harris just got some Geo Altafrons. Uh, Jonathan, first of all, Jonathan, sorry about that trout. Uh, don't know. I mean, I have a video called Sudden Death, Why Fish Die Suddenly. It could be a variety of reasons. Um, if he was very large, he could have died of old age. Doesn't sound like that was the case. Uh, you know, fish, like people, get odd things sometimes that you can't figure out unless you do an autopsy. Who's going to pay for that or do that? I mean, I, you know, they have uh, organ failures. They have all kinds of strange stuff. If all the other fish are thriving and doing well, you just may, may have had a fish that um, had something wrong, had something genetically uh, wrong with them and just died on you. I mean, that, that kind of thing happens. Uh, <clears throat> so um, hello from Russia. I like that. Now, regarding the coloring up of, um, the, the coloring up of, of those geos, it really is good food, good water, and time. I mean, it takes time. I mean, it takes time for them to color up. And uh, in some cases, like the Ceremonensis, they, they get fairly large. And uh, so it can take a while for them to put on some size. And uh, whereas the um, the redhead Tapajos, they started showing color pretty quickly. You know, those red and black and white stripes on the tail and uh, you know on the dorsal. And so they're already showing some beautiful color. So it, it varies fish to fish, but time, good quality food. Be sure your food does not have fillers, um, you know, things of that nature. And uh, that's really what it, what it comes down to. Uh, Dan wants to know how big is the Jack Dempsey? Four and a half to five inches. Four and a half to five inches. Has had great color from the, from the moment I got him. You know, he was pretty small when I first got him. He was initially named uh, Tom after the person who gave him to me. Then we discovered it was a female, so it's Thomasita. Thomasita. 
And uh, so we had to do a name change. Let's see. Uh, car carpet man, carpet man. I I usually put in uh, food that'll get consumed within usually a minute or two, and um, with some fish, like in the fifty-five gallon, with the uh, red spotted severums, the geos, the uh, chocolate cichlids, and the rainbows, green tears. Uh, they move a little bit slower. You know, they kind of approach the food a little bit slower and uh, they might need two or three minutes to eat all their food. Whereas these fish here, uh, I could put a, a fistful of food in there. It would be gone in under, under a minute, maybe two minutes max. Uh, these fish attack their food uh, viciously. Now um, on the subject of food, let me see if we can figure out this. Um, there was a focus issue. Someone mentioned a focus issue. And let's see here. Is that in better focus now? It looks like it on my end that it's in better focus. Give me a focus check. I don't know why it would be out of focus. The, the camera seems to be tracking me. The camera has a little square and it shows that it's tracking me. At any rate, uh, this, is, uh, this is the food container. And it, it's a little bit deceptive. This is not extreme food in here. What I have in here is a combination of food. And hello, Belgium. <laughs> we've got Russia. We've got Belgium. We've got... Uh, <laughs> oh, I love it. So what's in here right now <clears throat> is just a real crazy mix. Not sure if you can see it there. It's a mix of a different kind of different kinds of pellets, and uh, I'll put. Uh, I have Piscine Energetics three millimeter slow sinking. This is a um, very high quality food. Forty two percent protein, eight percent fat, and. Um, it's it's a mysis shrimp. You can pick this up from the shack. They sell it. You can get 10% off on it. It's not cheap, but it's super high quality. Now, keep in mind, when you're feeding high quality food, you don't need to feed as much to get as much nutrition. So a food that has, right, that has 50% the nutritional value You'd have to feed twice as much to give your food, the, give your fish the nutrition. Also, keep in mind that if you have low quality food, the fish is using energy to move things through its body that give it no substance. And so it's a real waste of money. All you're doing is polluting your tank. So, Piscine Energetics, also in there is Extreme Big Fella Pellets. There's also some cobalt floating pellets. These are made. Um, these have a look, these have prawns and all kinds of good stuff, prebiotic and probiotic, for the fish that like to grab the food from the top. So what I do is I just mix it. I just I just mix it all up. And I just give it a good, like a good stir and mix it all up. And uh, here, I'll show you. Let's take a look. Like watching an Amazon piranha feeding.
I've got to spread it out so that every fish gets a shot. Otherwise, uh, like the Bicolor 500 and the uh, Buchochromus nodotania, one of the smallest fish in the tank, are just not going to get a shot at the food. So I've got to spread it out so everybody gets a shot. So you can see that was a lot of food. And apart from a little bit of particles and stuff, it is all gone. Now, sometimes I'll even throw a little bit of, uh, of some of the extreme flakes in there as well. And uh, I try and keep them pretty well fed. I'm not seeing any real sunken bellies right now, even though I'll tell you, for some reason, every eye biter I've ever had, maybe it's the way they hold their fins, but every eye biter I've ever had has had a little bit of what looked like almost a sunken belly, but they eat like pigs and they, they live a long, healthy life. So I don't think that they have a, uh, that they have something going on like a, like a parasite. So, um, that's really the secret on food. I also use in my uh, South American tanks, I do use frozen um, brine and uh, brine shrimp, and I do use frozen krill with the African cichlids, the larger African cichlids. The smaller fish, like the rainbows, you know, rainbows have very small little mouths. And so with the rainbows, I have to, I have to use uh, very, very small food, or um, I take flake food and I crush it so that it's almost like dust and uh, and the rainbows can 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 get a lot of that you know through their through their throat in their mouth and through their throat because they're they have just very small small mouths whereas these pigs they they could probably get one of my fingers in their mouth if they wanted to I mean they just have massive pie holes Yeah, they'd eat again right now in a heartbeat. See this little buco right here? He gets he gets uh, kind of muscled, muscled and elbowed out of the way during feeding. So I got to really make sure. I got to really make sure that he gets he gets in the mix. And so I I make sure I, I I'm dropping food from side to side. Otherwise, I'm going to end up with uh, some hungry fish. So any questions? Any questions? Here's your uh, chance to throw a question at me. And uh, yeah, Sean, uh, rainbows r rainbows are also very fast, so they can get to a lot of food fast. So yeah, they are they can be little pigs. All right, let's see here. Thank you for promoting that thumbs up, John. I appreciate that. And Danny says no focus problem. Thanks. I don't know why that went out of focus temporarily. It should never go out of focus. And uh, hello from Canada, Zane up in Canada, and Jemiah over in Virginia. We're all over the place. Virginia is not that far from me. And Jemiah, there are no stupid questions. If you are a new fish keeper, we, we welcome you and we'll help you any way we can. One of the goals of my channel and uh, me personally are to help new fish keepers to uh, to make it, you know, to not have those initial uh, crashes that happen. Uh, please don't overclean your tank. That's probably the most common mistake that new fish keepers make. In an effort to make the tank look pristine, they overclean it. They clean the filter and the and the gravel and you know the substrate and everything to make it look good, and they kill everything. So. Try and do a little bit of research on what is called the nitrogen cycle. Nitrogen cycle. There's a great article at uh, cichlid-forum.com, and it's called, I think it's called Water Chemistry Basics. Real simple. And um, it talks about the nitrogen cycle. Uh, get familiar with the nitrogen cycle, and um, even veterans... Even veteran fish keepers will make mistakes and disrupt that cycle 
and kill off fish with an ammonia spike. So um, the more familiar you are with it and the more gradient and gradual and gentle your approach is in cleaning, uh, the better, the better for your tank, especially if it's brand new. Uh, let it go through what it needs to go through. It's going to be foggy in the beginning. Be patient. Don't worry about the initial fog. That's just uh, you know a bacteria bloom, an algae bloom. That will pass. Don't panic on that. And then your aquarium will start to settle into being a viable, uh, seasoned ecosystem that can support life. And um, and 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 that when you've turned that corner, and your fish are no longer struggling, and uh, it's just a great thing. It took me a few months after I set these tanks up. Each tank took a few months before I felt confident that I could put two or three fish in at any time, and uh, and they would they would be okay. That that the available bacteria would uh, would be able to catch up and support what was going on. So patience is uh, is also a very important part of the equation. It looks like somebody hit me with a super chat. Let's see. Hey, Jordan LaBelle is here. Hi, Jordan. Looks like you mix things together too. And you know what, Jordan, you reminded me. I do put spirulina. Every now and then I throw algae wafers and spirulina in the tanks because I do want them to get some greens. Even the, uh, uh, the not just the omnivores, but also the, the, uh, the meat eaters, right? I, the carnivores, I, I, I give them vegetables as well. I want all of them to have, uh, have some, some veggies just to clear up. Uh, their system. Elizabeth Wagner, my platies and my Corys are both having babies and Corys eggs are starting to hatch. Should I wait for a water change? Yeah, it sounds like your water is pretty healthy. You're getting that kind of breeding. Uh, I'd let things kind of go, kind of be smooth. And uh, do you have a place to grow those babies out so they don't get eaten up? And, uh, you start breeding fish, you're going to end up with about 20 or 30 tanks. You know that. So, all right. So, let's see here. And thank you for that super chat, Elizabeth. I appreciate that. Carrie Pitt, I make my own vegetarian tabs. Wow. It's pretty cool. We make our own dog food and we supplement it with uh, dry food. But my wife makes a combination of fruits, vegetables, and meats. And uh, there's like sweet potato in there and uh, blueberries and pumpkin and chicken and beef and liver. And uh, anyway, those dogs eat pretty, pretty darn good, actually. All right. Any other questions? Yep, fish tours will take your fish. If I walk in with that Nicaragua, that male Nicaragua, I think they'll be happy to take it. I think they've sold. Uh, I've, I've gone back to the um, aquatic critter here in Nashville, usually like a week or two after I give them fish. They're always gone. They sell them really, really quick. And uh, sometimes they'll give me a store credit. Sometimes they don't. I don't, I don't really care. It doesn't really matter to me that much. Uh, I'm just looking to give them a new home at that point. Shannon King, what's a good fish food? Okay, everybody. Answer Shannon King's question. What's a good fish food? Everybody has their favorites. I I I like uh I like Northfin. I like um I used to use Northfin a lot. And um uh, I have stopped using it. I think they ran into a little bit of an issue that they've cleared up. But I was getting good results with Northfin. I like uh, of course Extreme. Piscine, I do a, a masterclass series with the owner of Piscine Energetics. Very impressed with the research and what I was told during that uh, interview with the owner of Piscine Energetics. It's like a five video, five part uh, interview. And uh, I was just very impressed with Piscine Energetics up in Canada. Uh, of course, I saw a video of the fish farm that the person that developed Extreme has a fish farm and sells wholesale. They wouldn't sell directly to us. 
you'd have to get their fish through through uh, through retailers. But the fish that he had in this fish farm, I've never seen color in fish. There, he had a Bucachromus notatania that I thought it, it looked like a saltwater fish. It was so beautiful. So I said, this person knows something about nutrition, and he and his wife, I believe, were mixing up these batches, these big wet batches of food. Uh, just they would make themselves. And then he decided to start packaging and selling it under the name Extreme. And so that's when I started buying Extreme because I just really saw what that person's fish were like. And um, I'm not sure how familiar you are with uh, Bucachromus spectabilis. And I talk about this in an upcoming video. This is a Bucachromus spectabilis. That's the most beautiful Bucachromus, Bucachromus spectabilis I've ever seen. The, uh, the points on the body, the shape, the individual colors of blue and yellow in the gills, the line on the dorsal, the orange in the anal fin. I've never seen one like that. And I think a lot of it has to do with um, good stock, water conditions, and food. And uh, again, like I said in that short video that I played for you, I'm, I don't know where, I'm not sure where uh, James sources his fish, but wherever his sources are, it's tremendous. So um, at any rate, if there are any more questions, I'm going to be seeing you folks over in Orlando. Please come up and say hi. I will be hanging out at the uh, creator's area. There, it used to be called Fish Tuber. Now it's it's a uh, I think they're calling it the creator area because there's they they have uh, people on TikTok and Instagram and so it's not just YouTube anymore, but I will be in that area from time to time. I will be doing a uh, a live stream I believe 6 p.m. Florida time on Saturday, and um, be sure to tune in for that if you can. Uh, Ten points for a successful cichlid tank, and um, otherwise. I'll just be hanging around. I'll be walking around with Joe from Glass Cages. I've got, we're going to have some t-shirts, some Glass Cages t-shirts. We're going to be giving those away. And uh, I'm also going to be uh, hanging out there with Jerry, Jerry's Fish Room. And uh, so come on out. Just come on over, say hi. And uh, uh, I'd love to meet you. Shake your hand. Tell me what your YouTube name is. <laughs> Very few of you use your real name on YouTube. I understand. I understand why. I'm I'm kind of an anomaly. I'm just Ben O'Chart, you know. But uh, come on up and say hi, and that should be fun. I'll be there. Uh, I arrive Friday. I'll be there all Saturday, all Sunday, and then I, I think I fly out Monday morning. And um, looking forward to getting down to Florida. This time of year, it's going to be much nicer than it was in the summer. In the summer, I couldn't even go out of the hotel. It was, I mean, it gets humid here. But the humidity, the humidity in Orlando was insane. It was like breathing water. I felt amphibious. So, um, all right. So I will see you folks in in Orlando. And uh, yeah, Shannon, come by and say hi. Thank you, Darth. And uh, hey, Amber. Thank you, thank you, Amber, for that. I appreciate that. And I will enjoy Florida. There will be no live stream uh, next week at the No Cichlids and Coffee live stream uh, since I will be in Florida. But the week after that, uh, there will be one. And I will have videos. I'm going to try and film enough videos during the week so that there are videos dropping and posting. And uh, I have one on my plans for moving the fish around, the South Americans. And I also have uh, a couple other follow-up videos. I'm going to be putting out a uh, some uh, profile videos, probably a profile on that um, on the placodon, on the placodon, that very rare fish called a placodon, and also a, a profile video on this Bucachromus spectabilis, who loves to follow my finger around. Uh, probably do a a uh, profile on that fish as well and so thank you for that super chat and if i missed any super chats or comments 
I am sorry. I try to get to as many as I can. Thank you, everybody, for showing up. I will see you in Orlando or from Orlando, and I'll see you two weeks from today. And uh, you are the best, my folks. You are very appreciated. And uh, I think that's it for me. All right. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.